Bis zum nächsten Mal. James Masters. Taking names, man. Yes. Hello. Hi. Um, I do have a question. Yes. Um, but first, I want to say um, I was at the Friday panel, and on behalf of what I'm sure is the vast majority of the fans, I want to apologize if there was anything disrespectful or hurtful said to you guys. this Friday panel, man. That sounds very interesting. It's, wow. you know, I'm sure they can, it wasn't too much, but I think it's just some things came across a little weird, and I just want to say that we all love you guys. We appreciate you coming out here so much. It means so much to us, actually. Thank you. So, Can we get blamed for the economy again? <laughs> My question is, um, what was your favorite aspect of your character, or characters? Sadie's. Sadie's. <laughs> <laughs> One question. It's going to take a while. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite aspect of my character... Just... Oh god, this is really hard. Pass. <laughs> Well, I always have something to say, so. Um, I think with Glory, I loved the fact that she wasn't, even though she was obviously an adversary to Buffy, she wasn't out to, from her point of view, harm anyone. She, had, she took herself very nonchalantly, and she just was going about her business, and whoever was in her way maybe um, suffered. But she didn't have that attitude of destruction and, you know, Demise. She just had a positive outlook and just wanted to go home. So that was a really fun aspect of playing her. Uh, my sense of humor. <laughs> my eyeliner. Whenever I go on show, oh, yeah, a little bit of eyeliner, yeah, yeah. I kept, I kept like makeup people would come and go, and like they would always be like, I would like a little more eyeliner, but like they're gonna catch you, man. They're gonna catch you using the eyeliner. Like that's the point. It's punk rock, guys. I wanted there to be a scene where I'm actually putting it on in front of the mirror. Just to, like, it's punk rock. Yeah. Whenever I go on a set now, I'm always asking, give me a little bit of that Nicolas Cage stuff, man. Just a little bit. And they're like, man. Um, what did I like about Darla? Uh, 400 years old? Pretty epic. Oh, I, I have a good doctor. Um, I liked that Faith was the contrast to Buffy. I mean, like, growing up, there were always the, the lovely blonde hair, blue-eyed girls next door, which, which was great. But I was always different, and I liked the sultry brunette. Well, just, you know, I was a bit of a punk, and I was a little bit, you know, um, I love that she was ballsy. Being this ugly, you know what I mean? It's hard for a girl, like, you know? I was a total punk tomboy, and I didn't see that a lot on, on television, so I liked that about her, that, that Joss and the Peoples really embraced her, her being different than Buffster. Yeah. Okay, I guess it's my turn. Um, I guess, after all this thought, I would 
come up with something better, but I think my favorite part about Harmony was just being able to say probably the meanest things to people and not even realizing I was doing it. <laughs> that was kind of fun. <laughs> Hello, uh, thanks for coming out guys. Uh, my question is, for those of you that worked both on Buffy and Angel, what were the similarities or difference in the dynamic like on set? Um, I, I, I also, for me, um, you know, Buffy shot in Santa Monica and it was closer to my house. I just had a longer commute when I went to Angel. <laughs> I sat in a little more traffic, but other than that it was great. <laughs> We were known as uh, we were known as Buffy the Weekend Slayer. We would we would work 12 to 20 hours a day on Buffy. Buffy had a little more bigger of a budget, and the the bigger the budget, the longer the hours. Uh, and so it was a relief to go to Angel because they didn't have as much money. So it was like 12 hours and out. We don't care. We're out. <laughs> But it, you know, basically, it was the same directors, the same writers, and obviously a lot of the same actors. So a lot of it was very similar, frankly. Yeah. It was actually nice because it was a nice transition. It wasn't like having to meet a whole set of new people and kind of, you know, be the new kid on the block. It was just like family, yeah. all, the whole through and through. Yeah. It was closer to my house, so I could <laughs> reach out to him. Um, but it was also it was a later time slot, so it was a little bit edgier. It was a little bit darker, but. The onset vibe was totally goofier because of David. Because <laughs> David flashes everybody and you know, farts, 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 and does all those fun guy things. You never pulled that out in front of me. It's new to me. Shocking. I love these signs, by the way. Smile, you're on Dragon Con TV. And then it says you're like, What happened to make, it, make them have to put that sign on? Like, like, Next question, man. Hi. I have a question for... Uh, I have a question for the whole panel. Um, you guys have... You know, you've had so many different roles, and sometimes within the same character, like different roles, like with Echo, with Harmony. And I can think, as a fan, Whedon works or otherwise, you know, I can think of a scene for each one of you that I personally thought, like, that was so strong for the character or whatever. I want to know, acting wise, what was your favorite scene in your whole career that you did that you just were just like, this? You know, just saying, like, this is amazing and, you know, just that kind of thing. That was actually seen by people? <laughs> Nick's make, Nick makes his own private movies. <laughs> and they're the good. The truth, the penis thing, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love these questions. What's show. your favorite thing about yourself? Like, it's, yeah, you don't ask actors that, you know what I mean? Because you get a lot of pontificating at this point, you know? I liked Pam blowtorching Wesley. <laughs> Just me. That torture scene, he was so brave. What a trooper. He was like, hit me harder. I was like, you want it? I'll hit you, bro. <laughs> That's fun. Favorite scene ever in my career? Is that the I question? I thought it would. Go ahead. Effie ever. Um, I mean, I working with Jack Nicholson, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, and as good as it gets. I mean, I don't know. I was very young, I didn't know what I was doing, and he was Jack. <laughs> uh, okay, this is the most afraid I ever was. It was actually doing Dragon Ball. And they, um, they, discovered, they, they discovered that they didn't want to use the stuntman because they didn't want to put him through the same four hour makeup process because there was a money issue, right? So I remember realizing that they're not ever going to use Danny Hernandez. <laughs> and they called me to the set and my fiance is with me and uh, they got Danny up on a wire 30 feet above his cliff face and Danny kind of takes a half step off into the air with the idea that he's being sucked by this magical thing, you know, off the cliff. And um, Danny oversells it a little bit, it goes beyond where he should, and it just cheese grates against the cliff wall. Just <laughs> and they lower him down, and he's all kind of limp, and the director turns to me and goes, okay, James, you ready? <laughs> and then at that, that moment, my adrenaline level just went, oh my god, I'm screwed. <laughs> and I got
got up there and I did it and I didn't cheese great. And then the, the stunt car, the, 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 the leader of the stunt guy, Jojo, said that I did it better than Danny. And I was like, shut up, he's going to kick my ass. <laughs> but that was certainly the most frightened I ever was, yeah. My real name is My real name is Danny Hernandez, so I <laughs> doing not doing James' stunts on Dragon Ball. <laughs> And um, it was a really big play, and I was only 10, it was the first thing I'd ever done, and I just, I was hooked after that, so that's probably the most pivotal moment in my life, for sure. I've, I've acted with dogs, like little puppies, before. <laughs> on this because I don't know if I think of a good one I'll answer it by the end of the session. Okay, so uh, my question is for uh, James uh, but at first I wanted to say I'm a pers uh, close personal friend of Xander's <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, a, like a friend of Dorothy is just rolled in okay. it. On set, I just want to know what was in the cups every time you were drinking blood of Spike. Oh, dude. Uh, <laughs> no, man, it was strawberry quick. And uh, that was some nasty syrup. I have to say, they actually, uh, after a while, they would have a paramedic on the set because uh, one of the actors, not me, but one of the actors once uh, actually went into uh, some kind of shock. And yeah, yeah. Because like, you drink, you don't drink it one time. You drink it like 14 times for all the different takes and everything. Unless you're on Angel, then they don't have the budget for 14 times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's three takes then. Like, Christ. But um, yeah, some guy drank a bunch of blood and just nosedived into the concrete, so they always had a paramedic standing by. And I always thought, you know, I don't want to sip it daintily. I want to drink it hungrily. So I would just chug that stuff. And it was like, okay, no lunch for me, man. <laughs> blood and it's in milk. Yeah, man! Yeah. <laughs> Ew! Hi. Hey. I wondering if you guys could tell us what upcoming projects you have um, that we should be looking for you. Is everyone on their knees? <laughs> That's awesome it's like, for our it's like, it's like we're playing golf. Damn, you know? Uh, I think I just got killed off on uh, Hawaii Five O last week. Did you really? Yeah, they slit my throat. But not before I knifed McGarrett in the belly. That was good. <laughs> Alex was a great guy, by the way. He's a stunt coordinator in Australia. He's certified, so he, he kicks in. Um, uh, I want a new uh, episode of Supernatural coming up. I might be touring a play to China. Uh, called the Pentagon Papers, produced by the State Department. <laughs> so, like, hey, Hillary, I'm out here for you, man. Um, I might be going to Europe to film a um, kind of a Twilight Zone thing, but uh, uh, that may or may not work out. What are you going to see if they have enough money? Um, and then uh, my band, Ghost of the Robot, is going to release We're Back Together, and we just uh, we just recorded what we think is our best album. Uh, like usually we're not satisfied with anything and we're like, hey man, this is, this is really good. Like Charlie said, this is one of the best albums of the century, man. I was like, dude, it's only 2011. He's like, regardless, man, regardless. It's a lot of days. Yeah, yeah. A lot of days. But uh, yeah, so that's going to drop on November the 15th on Amazon and iTunes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you write a song about my character, I heard? Maybe. <laughs> I heard a rumor. Um, I'm producing a couple of things. Uh, my brother and I started a production company called Boston Diva Productions. Shocker. 
Um, we're producing a biopic on the photographer Robert Mablethorpe right now, and uh, we're also developing another script that should uh, that I can't talk about. But I shot a documentary about the country of Albania like a week ago. I became an Albanian citizen, and so we went and documented. That. Yeah, the Albanians in the house. There are none of you. Don't lie. Um, but uh, I may. I think I'm going to be going back. My friend Matt Bomer from True Calling is on a show called White Collar. So I'm going back and doing that. And yeah, that, doing some charity stuff that you guys always contribute to, which I appreciate. I'm wearing my beads from Tharch Gulu. Some of you have bought these beads. They're from Northern Uganda, from former abductees and child mothers. So thank you guys who have gotten them. And if you haven't, go get them now. <laughs> On www.lizamtrishadishku.com <laughs> slash starchkulu. Um, I'm on a new series in the fall called A Gifted Man on TV, 8 p.m. I have a TV movie on TNT coming out November 30th with John Corbett and Gary Cole called Ricochet. And it's based on Sandra Brown's novel. And I have a movie in the theaters with Dane Cook and Elizabeth Mitchell December 3rd called Answers to Nothing. And follow me on Twitter. Is this on now? Okay. I'm starting a movie Tuesday with, if anybody saw Grave Dancers, the same director. <laughs> Thank you. Mike, one person solid. Uh, <laughs> Mike Mendez. It's like a throwback to like a classic 50s horror movie. It's a really fun movie. So we start shooting Tuesday. Um, and I have a movie coming out called The Dead Ones. This is uh, probably like December-ish. And um, a web series called Goodnight Burbank that you can watch on Hulu. Um, I have a couple movies newly out on DVD. One's called Thirst, another one's called Twelve, another one's called Dark Real. So you guys can just Netflix your asses off. <laughs> and then um, I just got engaged, so I'm planning a wedding. Woo! Uh, I'm doing a cartoon called Super Unknown, starting next week, and uh, um, um, I'm still starring in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of charity work. <laughs> Hi, I'm oh, Criminal Minds. Um, my question is for all of you. Since you played your characters for quite a while, especially in the case of Nicholas Brendan and James Marster, do you ever feel like your character's personality and mannerisms influenced your own personality and mannerisms when you were off set? I think that's <laughs> I don't know how you, because I've only known you as Spike. Yeah. But I could definitely, like, sometimes, like, when you're walking through, like, the hall and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. You get that kind of, there's like, it's like, a, it's like, it's like, it's almost like you're working your obliques, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, I'm not sure if you walk that way before, but it's, I was practicing that walk because I ripped it off from Malcolm McDowell and Cat People. You did it great. Yeah. Huh? That was the thing. Um, no, I often got told that I would, like, directors would be like, man, you are nothing like your character. Because I would be like, ah, you know, it's a compliment. Yeah, yeah, which means you can act. My character was kind of a, you know, jerk, really, yeah. if you think about it. Um, we jerk uh, with a heart. But, oh, thank you. Um, uh, no, I climbed into the character for a little while, uh, when he was getting his soul back and he was being revisited by all of his, uh, former victims. And so I had to get, like, uh, think about everything that I felt guilty for and, like, beat myself over the head all day with it. And, no, uh, yeah. yeah. Don't, if, for method acting, don't try it for television, please. Uh, It'll take you right to the drink. Yep. Water. <laughs> I, I, no, I'm exactly like Xander. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. What you see is what you get. But actually, I walked into the, uh, I, when I auditioned for Buffy, I had a, had a pre-read, so I met with the casting director, and so I had played it kind of like me, you know? And she's like, you know, great, but I'm gonna give you a couple notes. 
you know, don't do it like you just did, do it this way. So then I'm like, all right. So she's like, I'm come back at four o'clock and meet Johnson, Gail Berman, and everybody. I'm like, okay, great. And so I walk into the room and Gail Berman, uh, who became the head of Fox TV, is on the phone and Josh is over here. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, hey, who you on the phone with? Tell him they sold me 25 bucks, you know? I'm like, like, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing. <laughs> then I do the scene that, as the cast director said to do it, and Josh is like, uh, he's like, okay, he's like, yeah. He's like, that guy that came into the room, can you do it like him? And I'm like, <laughs> And the rest is Hollywood history. <laughs> We're just like looking at you, sweet. Hi. I just want to know if you guys ever played any pranks on each other during shooting. I don't know. Did you? I, ne I never did. We weren't allowed. Yeah. We really didn't have time. Yeah. We didn't have a big budget. We're I can tell you on when, when we were shooting the pilot of Kitchen Confidential, uh, John Cho and I took, took all of the uh, toilet paper out of our trailers and, uh, and uh, wrapped it, wrapped Bradley Cooper's BMW with it, and then poured some water on top of it. <laughs> That's what happens when you know when 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 you know the number two and three on the call sheet have some time in their hands. You know, <laughs> Coop's working. It's like, hey, you want to wrap this car and tell it? Yes, well, I do. <laughs> But Buffy, they really, we were so far behind at all times, and we had a, a line producer named Gareth Davies, who was English, but was just a bitch of a man. Yeah. I remember there was, it was, it was Charisma's birthday, and Joss had actually kind of you know, organized this thing of singing Happy Birthday to her on set. And, you know, this is before Joss really kind of took over as the boss boss, and Gareth came, he's like, shut the fuck up, we'll be home! <laughs> No birthday, you know, and, and Christmas goes away crying. It's like, and Josh is like, Garrett, what the, what did you just do? You know, we're, we've got a girl in our trailer crying right now. We've got to redo her makeup, you know. It was just like, ah, oh, no birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is my best English accent, too. This is... Seriously, if we got a comma wrong of the dialogue, we'd have to go back and get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Come, 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 come. <laughs> <laughs> Any pranks? David, I mean, I know there wasn't a fart. lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he went to flash someone. Yeah, he yeah. dropped trout. Yeah. 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 Well, there's also dirty Sanchez. There's a lot of dirty Sanchez. What is a dirty Sanchez? <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> Mercedes like, dude, don't we can go. I can show you. Uh, that's <laughs> They would be the end of my relationship. <laughs> <laughs> we get the giggles a lot. I mean, yeah. just out of, I mean, David and I would just laugh over the fact that we were making a living playing vampires. <laughs> yeah. And we were you call this a living? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes on Buffy and Angel, they would have me say some crazy stuff. <laughs> so yeah, we would, we would bust up sometimes. Um, you all were, of course, all amazing in your roles, but if you had played a different character on Buffy or Angel, who would you have wanted to be? Joss. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of responsibility, though. I know, yeah. it's great. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, he stresses a lot, you know. I know. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't want to play anybody else, man. <laughs> Sorry. It's bad. I would say um, Fred, just because I don't know what other show you can really just mid season just die and come back as somebody else. <laughs> and that's really cool, you know? But as an actor, it's like a dream come true. You're like, so I've been playing this one for three years, kind of sick of it, and then you just now get to be somebody else. It's incredible. <laughs> so I'd say that. I like Spike. I thought it would be fun to do you. Or do you. It would be fun to do Spike for a day at home. But then I, I always wonder what it would like to be Buffy.
selfie and then they, they let me do that for a day and I was like, all right, cool, I'm good. <laughs> That's a I'd say Larry, the, up, the upstairs neighbor, because he was like, had dates with like stewardesses and stuff like that. <laughs> and like, he didn't have, like, you know, Mr. Furley didn't think that he was gay, you know, so. <laughs> anything wrong but pretending to be gay. Some of my best friends pretend to be gay. <laughs> Great health care. I uh, have a question for each one of you so I'll just ask and go to the end of line and keep coming back up but I'm going to go in order that I wrote them down so James I'm start with you. Um, I started reading uh, listening to the Dresden Files. <laughs> that I got into because you voice them. I suggest everyone go listen if you haven't. Um, All the tough voices are on the phone. <laughs> and I am very disappointed to hear that through some conflict you're not able to do ghost stories. Yeah, that, that was heartbreaking, man. I was busy. I, 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 they wanted me for a certain uh, period of time and I was already filming something and then we rescheduled re, uh, it and then I got busy again and they said, you know, we have a deadline. And so they went ahead with another very, really good actor. But um, I think because of you guys, they're going to have me back. I may actually read Ghost Story then and, and, and jump back on when you get back. But my question for you is, uh, having some history as stage uh, director and casting that, if, if you were put in charge of the Hollywood movie, who would you cast in today's actors as Harry Dresden? Nick Cage. <laughs> He's tall, you know. Association associated with Joss's work. Well, I was lucky enough to present at the second Slayage conference a paper on Anya comparing her to a Shakespearean fool or a truth sayer. And I've always wondered if you guys see any representation in the roles that you play from Shakespeare or classic film or literature that maybe you had seen a glimpse of another character in your character that had been written. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember, remember, remember. <laughs> well, you can trace glory back to the Greek classics, I think. I mean, Medusa, glory, not too different. You know, there's a few others, so I, I think she has some history there. I mean, I didn't play Harmony for nothing. <laughs> I don't know that she said two Shakespearean in her references. But, like, you know, like, like a fool in one of his plays. You know? Yeah, maybe just the Joker. I'm just, like, constantly the... I don't jester. know Shakespeare <laughs> at all. Um, yeah, I think my, my character came from a Warner Brothers cartoon, Spike the Dog. <laughs> what are we doing now, Spike? What are we doing now? Shut up. <laughs> um, but I think, that, I think that Buffy was, uh, was Joss's Hamlet in the way that uh, it was, thematically speaking, it was really about uh, how do you get between childhood and adulthood? How do you pass through adolescence and realize that the world is messed up without giving up on it? Uh, and I just don't know if Hamlet had someone to mess with him that bad as Spike. <laughs> <laughs> Lysander, I suppose, but I get, that's my best, yeah. I'd have to think about that. I've been thinking about it. I'd have to think about it. I haven't really ever gone there. But now I know someone's going there, so I can't get that one. Do some research. We'll tweet it once we have our answers. We'll tweet it. <laughs> Which is very Shakespearean, if I'm not mistaken. If I know my Shakespeare, it's all about tweeting. <laughs> 
farting or twatting. question is for James oh, upstairs, and I wanted to know what is the hardest scene that you ever filmed in your entire career? Well, that ain't funny, but it's true. Um, it was a bathroom scene in Buffy, man. Uh, I, can't, I can't watch scenes like that. If I see it on television, I switch the channel. If I notice that it's a, there's a movie with those kind of scenes, I don't, I don't, uh, it's like Mystic River. Those are my favorite actors are in there, but I just can't go watch that movie. Um, yeah, so I read the script, and I, I remember telling Steve tonight, who wrote the script, you know, sometimes you just don't understand what you're doing to us. You don't, you, you write this stuff, but you don't understand someone's got to actually feel it. Uh, so yeah, I was, I, that sent me into therapy. I, I, it was just bad. I was, I was, I was kneeling on the, this is not funny, man. Oh, man. Uh, I was kneeling on the concrete floor, thinking that if I just drive my head into the floor hard enough, I could fly away. <laughs> yeah, well, I got the, uh, <laughs> Next question. <laughs> like, yeah. like sprout wings and fly? Yeah. <laughs> thank God you didn't. Yeah, that would have been a mess. We would have missed you. Oh, thank you. Hey, I was wondering if you got a front seat. Did you get a front row seat? Second row. Oh, that's not bad. She got mine at noon. Um, hi, so my question is for everybody. Um, at the end of season three, um, graduation day didn't exactly go as planned. So I'm wondering if you all had the chance to give a graduation speech, what would the title of your speech be? I gave the graduation commencement speech <laughs> at my high school. Um, I was invited back, I think, I don't know, a few, you know, a few years after I graduated uh, college. Um, <laughs> But I can't remember what the title of my speech was, but it was really good. So I should, I should actually look it up. I've so spent a lot of time on it, and it went over very well. I made a speech in fifth grade to become the principal of the school, and I just promised everyone I'd take them to Magic Mountain, so. <laughs> <laughs> and it won. <laughs> yeah, so. Beige is the new white. <laughs> I would say, in all, in all sincerity, I would say that double tasking is biologically impossible, so stop trying. So that's the speech and the title of the speech at the same time. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> really, it's concise. Yeah. Eliza. <laughs> go big or go home. That's my motto in life, and you can apply it to a lot of things. A lot. A lot of things, really. A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to uh, take that motto. <laughs> I, you know, laziness and like and fear, I feel like, just have, have kept me. And I have a niece who's eight now, and I, you know, I go and talk to, to kids and teenagers, and there's just so much fear. And I feel like that's what resonated so much with people, my character on Buffy. They were like, you know, it just gave me, it empowered me and, and it just released this fear that I had and I just have been saying it since I was a teenager and it still works for me. Go big or go home. I have a tattoo, it says Sinemetu, which um, means without fear. It's also the Jameson whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, along the lines of living without fear, fear can hold you back from achieving your dreams and, and, and so it's a reminder to, you know, Live without fear. So oh, I met yeah. too. Andrew Jameson. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 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 Um, I'm sure as fans now we follow the all of your current new projects and we love them and all, but now and then with YouTube and stuff, we kind of flashbacks, oh they were in that like James, I think I seen you in George Harrison video. Was that you? No. That's really cool. Really <laughs> cool. <laughs> But I was wondering, what was your first experiences behind the camera? Um, my f in front of the camera. First, first time was oh, my first time was for uh, Northern Exposure. I was uh, I was a stage actor up in Seattle. And I had like I had five lines with Rob Moreau, and my lines consisted of yes sir, uh huh, oh that's interesting, that's yeah, yeah yeah. 
<laughs> I remember those ones. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I remember thinking, thank God I don't have more because I was having an out of, out of body experience. I, I, I was so freaked out by being in front of the camera. I just thought millions of people are staring at me. What do you do? <laughs> what do I do with my hands? Jesus. <laughs> God. I was freaked. Yeah. Mine was the first Adams Family movie. Are they made for real girls, girls? <laughs> Are they made for real girls, girls? <laughs> Clear yourself commercial. I shot a clear yourself commercial. I remember walking into the audition, the callback, and the guy before me had been in for like probably four or five minutes. And as an actor, you don't want to experience that. Like, Damn it, he's killing it, you know? How do you kill a clear yourself commercial? <laughs> and then so he kind of comes out, and then I'm like, fuck. So I go in, and, and then there's a director and the ad agent people, and they're like, uh, they're like, say that's logical. And I'm like, that's logical. I said, what does it say with a smile on your face? I'm like, that's logical. And they're like, thank you. And I'm like, fucking A. <laughs> and I literally, I remember I walked to my car, I was kicking, I, I, was, I was done. I was you were doing saying it over and over. That's lo they, how do I fuck up? That's logical. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time I got home, they called and I booked it. I was stuck. I was just so excited because it's like, I didn't think that I would ever, do, you know. I got into acting because I had to stutter. Not, not to actually work. <laughs> Weird. I said there's nothing like a YouTube mashup to make you realize like what a weirdo you are and all the weird things you've done on this camera. And it's kind of cool on the one hand, having, I mean, I've been acting for 20 years and so it's, sometimes it's cool and sometimes it's not. Like going through puberty on YouTube when you're, you know, it, it can be a little, a little gross. <laughs> uh, my first on camera gig, uh, Dario Argento. Directed like a movie called Two Evil Eyes, or like one of seven people, I think that's it. Um, <laughs> uh, it was Dario Argento and George Romero, and um, they took two Edgar Allan Poe stories and they put them together, and I was in the Black Cat version. I had five lines with Harvey Keitel. I had no idea who he was. <laughs> and I didn't care to know because there was a really hot guy in the crew. <laughs> and I, felt like I was about 16, so I had no idea what I was doing. So, yeah. That's the question. What was our first mm -hmm. gig? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first gig? Uh, my first thing was that, a movie called That Night, and it was uh, C. Thomas Howell and Juliet Lewis, and uh, I was I got cast. I was nine years old, and I tripped and fell at my brother's audition, so I just went in and played myself, which is another shocker. Um, at ten years old, ten-year-old tomboy, a cute little movie. Yeah, what was it like? What, what was the question? You got it. <laughs> you got it. Nailed it. Yeah. Day three of a little ride. It's a great con. You guys having a good time? Uh, Buffy seemed like a pretty physically demanding show. I was just wondering what kind of training you did and if you ever got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> there was a. There was an episode where I forgot what it was, but I, um, I, I was I was falling a lot in it, and and um, I remember there was one where I actually had to fall. I had to keep kind of tripping over, and then I would fall like out of frame, which I did a lot. But in this particular episode, I, I kept tripping myself on my big toe, you know, just to get to make it right. And um, to this day, that toe still really hurt. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> So I've done a lot of Pilates and stuff because of it, like, <laughs> like you know, like big toe Pilates, you know, big toe traction. It's the extent of my <laughs> training. It's such a big device, which is a small little thing, you know. <laughs> it makes it bigger, though. <laughs> Allergic to the prosthetic during um, Buffy, during the beginning phases of it, I was I was the one they actually tested the makeup on, and um, I, I started becoming allergic to every um, remover that they would use. So they would take it off, and my face would I'd have like burns on my face from the different removers. And at one point, it was so bad they removed it, and I was supposed to actually go and shoot 
as a normal face. And I remember um, Todd in the makeup department was like, I, you need to go down the set. And I went down the set and I had, my face was just bright red and my eyes were swollen. And they were like, um, we're gonna send you home. We're gonna actually drive you home. <laughs> and they drove me home. And I didn't have to shoot the rest of the day. And then they picked me up and brought me back the next day. And the swelling had gone down. I, be, I, started, I was becoming allergic to every chemical that was being used. So um, they finally discovered that, you know, Simple Green, you know, Simple Green yeah. that you used it, that actually they could use that to remove the prosthetic and I wouldn't, like, my face wouldn't burn from it, so. Yeah. Somebody had that in the crowd today. Are you here? Someone, two people wore yeah. vampire faces and they came and said they asked you, James, how, you know, they had total ring up yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's not pleasant. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Um, uh, when I go on a set, when there's a lot of fights, I go to the stud crew and I go, okay, black belt, green belt, bulge. <laughs> which, which is to say, I can sell, I can sell a punch in close up really well. It's just, it just looks great. If you're, if you're taking me from the waist up, I can do the moves and it's all cool. But if you really have me full figure, my footwork is not black belt. It's, it's, it's really like a, it's a, it's a light green belt. <laughs> And so, um, what that means is, because I came from stage, so I was, I was too prideful. I was like, we don't get stuntmen on stage. <laughs> so, I, 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 it took me a long time to learn the lesson, and Angel and, uh, and Buffy really taught me the lesson of let the stunts do their job. Um, and so, I, by the end of Angel, I, I really couldn't walk anymore. I, I was literally crawling out of my bed to the elevator in my building, down to the to my car, lift myself in the car, go to the chiropractor, and crawl across the street, hoping that no SUVs would run me over. And for literally like three months, I would get chiropractic and, and acupuncture, and, and it got me back on my feet, and I'm fine now. But yeah, I really screwed myself up. Yeah. This is why I like comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I was 17 and so I think I bounced because I, I was a kamikaze and I always wanted to do as much as possible because I remember seeing the first episode and I was pissed that I could see a wig flying around but it wasn't me so I was like Joss come on dude let me do let me get in there let me jump off the building let me do this and he uh, he actually started to let me do more than he should but um, I used to, yeah I used to get dinged up quite a bit but um, I was I was young and I bounced back and more now today, now that I'm getting older, I'll be like, I think I did some permanent damage back in this fucking age. But I, it's such an adrenaline rush. I just love it. You just get, I mean, scenes where I'm like fighting six cops. Like, that's kind of, that was, that was always a dream of mine, you know? <laughs> I've done it before in real life, and it's really not that much fun. <laughs> no, it's like playing football, man. You don't necessarily go to the hospital right afterwards, but it does hurt. My toe is getting better, though. <laughs> okay, growing up, I was a huge fan of all of you guys, but I'd have to say I'm definitely Team Spike. <laughs> Way better than Twilight. But <laughs> so my question is for James. What did you do to get the accent down? I watched a lot of Monty Python as a kid. <laughs> Like, if you notice in the very first episode, the accent's not very good. Like, I come out and say, you were there. Like, what the hell is that, man? Uh, I want to be like George Lucas and go back and fix it, you know? But seriously, Tony Head came to me one day and he just goes, we don't say it like that, you right. Literally. And, and so for, for three to six months, he, we would sit down with my line and just break it down phonetically and he would correct every little thing until I started to get it right, on, you know, normally. But without Tony Hedda, I would still be going, you would die young. How does it really go? I don't remember. You were there. You were there. No, you were there. Yo, Tony lives a block away from me right now. Does he really? Yeah, so I, that's the, you just had it like that. Yeah, we it's have, we have like that today, yeah. Can you not talk like that? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to hear Tony talk like an American. <laughs> <laughs> it's like John Wayne. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> Such a good actor, man. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I know that throughout the series of Buffy, a lot of you guys played both a good and a bad version of each of your characters. I'd like to ask all of you guys, um, what was your favorite side to play, the good or the evil side, and why and what did you like about it? Yeah. <laughs> when you play a villain, you lurk, which is very easy. They light you very well, they put great music behind you, and you just stand there. And that's it. And you wait for the hero to come by, you pop, bam, and then you go home. And that's it. But when you're playing a hero, you're always guilty about something, you're always running to try to save somebody, and it's hard work. And I forget it. Charlie was ever not evil, but she was bad and then really bad and then really, really, really bad evil. Um, I mean, I love the flashback stuff. I love playing her in, in, in the, the period stuff. So that's what I guess when she was her worst, really. It's fun to play bad. It's fun to play evil. I agree with with uh, James. You know, you get to do a bunch of bad stuff and you don't know, get in trouble. So, and you just, yeah, they play good music, yeah. You get great lines. Yeah. The only downfall is when you have kids, because they want you to win in the end of the episode. <laughs> like, I, well, I remember when I got Torchwood and I called my son, I was like, dude, man, I got a samurai sword, I got two guns, I got this wristwatch, I can travel through time, man. And he goes, Dad, do you win? <laughs> so what, end of the episode, you always lose. Do you win or lose this time? Well, you know, I lose. Oh, what else do you got? neck orgy. I mean, that's not bad. <laughs> Did anybody get that one? I, I was bad once, and I had a neck orgy with uh, fucking uh, Charisma and, and Allison. So if you didn't get it, I, I was only bad one time on the show. <laughs> I had a threesome on neck. So What's up? Hi, hi this question's for Nick. Remember when Xander was a vampire? Yeah. The bad thing I did was bite somebody. <laughs> Well, oh, hyena, that's right, I ate the school mascot. <laughs> and I got, you know, I'll take that back, you're right, I was a hyena. Um, walking in slow motion, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you kind of move a little slower, it's awesome. And, and you're, you move wider, you know, you're you along here. Hi, this question's for Nick. Um, there's an episode where there's two copies of you on the screen at the same time, and I was wondering if there was any talk about getting your twin involved in that one. Well, he actually, you know, I, I'm actually, um, uh, I'm a quintuplet, so <laughs> they just got, Kelly looks the most like me. No, the, Kelly was the, whenever it was the two of us on screen, it was, it was Kelly. Yeah, then people always say, so which one were you the... The, the schlubby one, or were you the cool one? I'm like, actually, I played, I played both parts, you know? I just changed my clothes a lot. And they're like, oh, really? Like, I thought, I thought Kelly was the cool one, and you, I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, and, so, and then people get really confused to where it's like, you know, when they knew that Kelly was on the show, they start to think that maybe he played Xander half the time, and I played him the other. <laughs> Just tell people I was the one who was talking at the time. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, but then they, and anything I've done, it's like, well, was that really you, or did, did Kelly do that? You know, and I'm like, no, guys, he was literally in, the, you know, maybe five seconds of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I love our brother to death, but I've done some decent work. <laughs> House right. what's up? Oh, I don't think anyone knows what that means. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 well, you know, this is the theater, huh? That's right. Uh, I just wanted to ask y'all, you can do this either way, depending on how much you have or haven't seen. Uh, some of you did come into and then off of the show. I wanted to know what your favorite episode of Buffy ever was, just to go back and see it to this day, whether it was one that you were in or one that you weren't. Or if you like an episode of Firefly or Dollhouse better, feel free to answer it that way as well. Can we use an episode of Angel? Okay. Yes, I'm so sorry. So anything that Joss touched, anything you can touch. Joss touched. I thought once more. I thought the musical episode. I liked Hush. 
Yeah, we all had to shut up on that week. Um, I, I like, I agree with you, Liz, I, the, the musical. I mean, I remember, uh, for, like, because we were terrified, right? Like, I remember they usually drop off a script so you know what's coming, but they just dropped off a cassette, so I was like oblivious, but I just go into my trailer, put it in the cassette tape, and put it, and it's Joss and his, and his wife playing piano and warbling the tunes out. And I love them both, they're both geniuses, but they can't sing that well. <laughs> Josh doesn't play piano that brilliantly, and I was just like, what the, f what? This is, what the hell, and I walk out, and you're coming out of your trailer, the other cast members come out of their trailer, and they're, they're like, everyone's holding a tape, it's going, <laughs> so we, we really thought, or I, I, my, my, my memory is that we all thought our careers were over, it's like, make us jumble chainsaws, man, anything, we're not musical theater people, we, we're not trained for this. What are you doing to us? And we all thought he'd gone insane. But Joss has finally lost it. And then, uh, and then they cut together uh, your dance number with Emma uh, just to reassure us that it wasn't going to suck. And then suddenly we were just flying. We're like, this is going to rock. Oh my God. Yeah. But we all had to really be brave. Like everybody went to Joss and tried to get out of it. And he wouldn't let anybody out. And uh, finally we realized that we were going to have to do this and we just really stuck it and, and studied and no one more than Sarah actually. She got two vocal coaches. Yeah, she had to be better than everybody. She got two. <laughs> she really, you know. even offered a vocal coach? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Number one on the call sheet, number two. It's a, that's yeah, a think, huge yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. First step, man. I would have loved a vocal coach. <laughs> Roseanne. No, I, the, you, you have to take once more feeling out of the equation, because I think to me that's, but I'm going to have to say once more feeling. It was such a magical time. I mean, it really was. It was like, after, you know, I was actually cool with it right away. I'm like, sweet, you know? You didn't hire me as an actor, as an actor. You barely hired me as an actor. <laughs> as a dancer, a singer. So it's like, I'm allowed to suck if I want to, you know? If, if I'm not good, then whatever, you know? And I trusted Joss implicitly to where it's like, if he thinks that we can do it, then we can do it. But it was so great. Once we were like, when I got that thing, and then we had to memorize all those songs with, you know, with Joss's voice. You know, <laughs> I still have that tape, man. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna release that. Song. Have you guys heard that at all? Has that, has that, yeah. Um, but it was really when I look back, I, I do sometimes I do these fan meet and greets where we do karaoke, and and I end up singing a lot of that. You guys see? Mm. I know it's pretty wonderful. <laughs> But on this last one in Philadelphia, I was doing it with fans, and I just, I just really started. I was, uh, I couldn't. The third time I was singing my song, I, I started crying because it just brought up a whole, like a good cry. But you know, but I couldn't. I needed to keep, keep, keep it together, you know. But it's, it really brings up an amazing time. I just got married to during that that particular thing. I'm now divorced, but. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was I, that that show was just. It's that's had like a like a once in 25 year on TV event. Yeah, I mean, I've learned more about the seasons and the shows from, you know, talking with you guys than I did coming in the fifth season, obviously, but I would definitely say that's the one I'm most jealous of. But, uh, easily. Well, you definitely don't want to hear me sing, but I would, I would have liked to auto-tune my way through that one. <laughs> have a baby by me, baby, be a man now. <laughs> okay, um, this one's for Mr. Brendan. Uh, of all the Xander shows, uh, Zeppo, Replacement, uh, Teacher's Pet, all the Xander focused episodes, which is your favorite? Uh, I think, I, you know, I, didn't, um, I didn't like the script, uh, all the girls, so it freaked me out. I, I thought I would have liked a bunch of chicks. Yeah, no, I don't know what it was. Uh, I probably when I when I finished re when I finished reading the Zeppo, I, I Jesus, I cried again. I was at Starbucks on Beverly Boulevard, and I hear I cry a lot. I'm not gonna lie to you. I really do. It's okay. They're good cries. Uh, but I, I I was very proud and of that because he was finally growing up a little bit, you know. And that last scene with uh, Cordelia, where I'm just kind of like, you know, it was nice to kind of to, I read a palpable feeling of of not the same anymore. You know, we were on a, diff a slightly different level. It wasn't much higher, but at least the perspective was a bit different. Um, and just, probably the one that was close to me is the pack, because that was episode six, or Teacher's Pet, actually, episode four. It was nice that they had the faith in me to give me my own episode. 
So, but the pack was probably the one where it's like, oh wow, you know? Again, slow motion walk again. <laughs> It's gonna be our last question of the day. Oh. Oh, I mean, he's, he, take that literally. We're talking about you guys cannot ask any questions for the rest of the day <laughs> to anybody else. So this better be a good one. Um, I was wondering if, when you were watching a movie or a show, when you, if you saw a role, either present or past, that you wished that, oh man, I wish I could have done that. I wish I could have been that actor or actress. A show, a show or a movie? Show or a movie, any role. Uh, some like it hot. I would, I'd love to do the Jack Lemmon part. <laughs> and I love to wear dresses, so perfect. I'm obsessed with damages right now. And I mean... I've been told, I, I could really see you on that show. I, I mean, I would, I would... I would play any role on that show. Well, I could see you as the lead of that show if it wasn't as Glenn Close. No, no. <laughs> pretend that she never was born. <laughs> Glenn Close was never born. <laughs> no, I. Yeah, I'm obsessed with Game of Thrones. If anyone else is watching. And I could see myself playing Khaleesi. <laughs> that Conan guy is hot. I mean, really. I mean, seriously. No joke. I saw him on Game of Thrones. I'm like, holy flop. <laughs> I want to go to the church of you. Uh, now that Stanley Kubrick is dead and he wouldn't be directing it, I would like to take a shot at the Malcolm McDowell role in, in uh, Clockwork Orange. But now with Stanley, and there's 45 takes, so I couldn't. Probably Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors. I love that chick. <laughs> we used to, my brother used to play the piano, he still does, and we used to sing duets and. I had to get down with her. I guess, um, I'm a big fan of Dexter, but I'd, <laughs> I'd want to play Dexter. <laughs> but I'd want to play Dexter, not... Each of the two events was never born. I hear they're recasting. <laughs> um, well, I guess that's it. Yeah. That'd be all been fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you very much, guys. We want to thank each and every one of you for coming up here to see us in Atlanta on another weekend. We love having you. We'd love to see you back soon. Once again, ladies, if we give a big round of applause for your stars of Rocky the Vampire Slayer.